Yo, what it do, YouTube? It's your boy, Gento. By now, you realize that there isn't a 2K14 demo in the Xbox Marketplace or in the PlayStation Store. And it's like every time something bad happens with NBA 2K14, me, personally, I'm like, okay, things are going to get better. We don't have to worry. They're going to bounce back. They're gonna recover from this. We hear about crew. Oh, that ain't crew. They're gonna redeem themselves with my team. Oh. Next week's the demo. They're gonna return the favor and get us hype again. Nah. It's like they didn't even care. And it's just so much I could just talk about. And first, let's just start with the demo. So I assume on Instagram and Twitter, I'm like, yeah. NBA 2K. Every year they drop demos either on the last Tuesday of September or the Tuesday before that. So I said, okay, the 2K14 demo will be here in September. No worries. You guys get to get a hands on feel of what to expect. And that's all a demo is used for. Demos give us fans a heads up of what to expect in the final build when the game comes out that way you're not just throwing sixty dollars away if the game is crap and if you do play it and you realize the game is crap you get to contact those developers you get to contact those guys that are listening that represent the company so you can tell them that this is a bug this isn't working fix this we want the perfect game we don't want this that is what a demo is used for so seeing that NBA 2K14 does not have a demo, and I'm not even worried about if the demo comes out during release date or after the release date, because if it's not out before, it's useless. They're not gonna go back and change it. They might during a patch, but that's not the same. That's not the same. You want your fans to give you feedback. You should actually listen to your fans' feedback. That's why demos are so important. Now, this isn't a video of me just being upset about the demo, hell nah. It's just so much and the list continues. When people were telling me that NBA 2K14 was just a copy and paste of 2K13, I got offended. I would always say, nah, this is so different. It plays different. The way you play it is not the same, but that's mainly because of two things. The controls are different, Oh, don't forget that transparent logo that says NBA 2K14. That way you can differentiate which gameplay it is. The controls are different and there's some sort of physics this year. So thanks to physics, new things can happen. There's collisions and you can block dunks. Now, is that making or breaking the game? Not really, because when I would get upset about blocking dunks, it wasn't in my career mode. It wasn't in my team mode. It was on the black top. I would always say, why the hell can't I just block this guy? Why can't I stop this guy just running inside and dunking? That was it. Other than that, 2K13 was pretty good. I had a lot of fun with 2K13. And I'm gonna get into the differences from 2K12, 2K13, and 2K13 and 2K14. You're gonna be so shocked, but you guys pretty much know where I'm headed with this. Now, to be honest, I gotta give in. To everybody that said this is a copy and paste of 2K13, you are absolutely right. Before you think this is a hate video, ask yourself this, what is new and innovative in 2K14? What is in NBA 2K14 that makes this game? Oh, if you want me to go down my list from what makes 2K13 different from 2K12, I'll be happy to do so. It's a long list, so I might just do that in some other time, but right now, really, what's new? Path to Greatness? You get that from pre-ordering. Let's say I don't pre-order and I just get it early. Then what? I don't have a pre-order code. You spend so much time in this one game mode that isn't even a real game mode. You get two options. You get LeBron James. It's not a creator legend, so it's not like 2K11's Michael Jordan challenge his arrival and that good stuff. Nah. 
so basically what you're doing is you're playing with a fantasy team you can easily go into the rosters create your own roster and put lebron there because you're playing with all five people on the court but that mode does have cut scenes where lebron is talking he's reading over some text i guess that's the sales pitch so let's say we all did not pre-order it that's one mode we won't be playing now there's cruise straight up 100 percent honesty this is why crew is not in the arena crew isn't in the arena because you're my player online couldn't play in the arena in 2k13 you couldn't you couldn't play in the arena in 2k13 which is why you can't do it in 2k14 yeah copy and paste right some people are like it's simple team up is in there just instead of having team up with players that are already in the nba just put it so that my my player can play team up with other people that's all it is that's all it is nothing more i don't care i didn't care about customizing courts or nothing i want to play my player team up that is what crew is about if you want to go into full detail yeah i want all that stuff but i'm saying and you can back me up on this i'm saying nba rules 5v5 four quarters that is what team up is that is what crew is this is cruise in 2k13 i'm playing blacktop i'm like all right this is cool but it's getting a little boring i wish they had 5v5 i said that for 2k13 i said that for 2k13 and what happens in 2k14 we have blacktop 5v5 and there's stamina there's fatigue now which doesn't really make or break the game that has no real purpose leaderboards hey there's leaderboards we get to see who's cheesing in the blacktop mode as if you didn't already know if you're going up against all 99 guys they're not going to just jack up threes oh no those 399 guys aren't going to jack up threes in the corner in the shadows no they're not going to just get inside and just dunk nah they're unpredictable let's add some leaderboards let's let these guys get a heads up as to how their opponents are playing the game because it's so unpredictable right nah like that is pretty useless it is now like i said crew isn't in the arena because it's not in 2k13 for them to actually put it in the arena it would actually make them have to code something new now before i get like too in depth and i get over some people's heads this is a copy and paste with minor tweaks that's better that's way better to differentiate 2k13 and 2k14 because if it was a copy and paste we would have the same controls and all that stuff nah but it's a copy and paste with minor tweaks putting crew in the arena would actually mean something new is in the game now let's talk about my career mode when they did not mention anything about my career mode i was like hell nah i seen my career mode when we was in novato and i said hell nah and when i told guys my thoughts they tried to say it was different but nah I probably can't tell you you're gonna see exactly why it's the same but it's crazy every year this is basically 2k's bread and butter this is my career mode when it came in 2k10 we got introduced with that summer draft combine and it was ridiculous instead of a demo i think that's what we got yeah you just paid like five dollars and you get that summer circuit that was ridiculous and actually you can import your guy from 2k10 into my career mode well my player mode and you're already boosted you already have your face and that was one of the perks if you got the summer circuit it shows your my player's face and everybody else has just got that black shadow that was pretty cool and 2k11 whew, that is when we got retros that is when we got jordan my player mode got revamped big time now in 2k12 honestly i think the only thing they changed was 
allowing us to actually answer press conferences the way we want to because remember it was just loyalty arrogance indifference and professionalism and that was so misleading so in 2k12 you would actually see the answers this time and they probably added about two or three endorsements that was about it but when we talk about 2k13 what my career mode blew all those other my career modes out the water gm sit down you have those pre-game rituals you have so many more endorsements there's a social media feature it was incredible it was crazy now the thing is maybe it was too hard to top maybe that's the case maybe that's why 2k didn't care i have another reason as to why 2k didn't really care but i'm gonna get to that a little later and i'm pretty sure we can all agree on this but i'm just saying in 2k11 that was one of my favorite games of course they didn't have all the stuff in my player mode but at that time my player mode was insane the online was insane everything about that game was insane i love that game if 2k11 and 2k13 had a baby she would be heavenly and i'm just saying the reason that my player mode was so successful in 2k11 was the fact that you're actually playing that mode non-stop to get your attributes up so that you can go online and play other people around the world. 2K12? I don't even know what to say about that game. They tried. They tried to increase longevity, but it's no way in hell I'm gonna play this game mode nonstop to boost my, not the attributes, it was this other thing. This other thing that was poor, graded poor, good, average, something like that. It was ridiculous. I said, ain't nobody got time for that. Cause it was like, 20,000 skill points to boost your post hook or something like that. I'm like, hell no. Nah. Why am I going to do this just to play against the computer? And then so many bugs and glitches in that mode. Spin moves. I'm dribbling out of nowhere. I'm dribbling. My teammate, he's in the corner. He's chilling. And I'm holding the ball, just minding my business, trying to see who's open. He comes out of nowhere, bumps into me. I lose the ball and my teammate Gray goes down. Remember that? Remember that? So annoying, right? But now let's talk about online real quick. It's not much to really say about online, but the reason I say 2K11 was one of my favorite because the online lobbies. Now, if you've never played in an online lobby, you are missing out seriously because no two gamers are the same. They're not. I'm playing my team mode and I'm forced to play on low difficulty and crazy sliders because other guys want to play casually? Are you serious? You mean to tell me I've been playing 2K my whole... I'm not even going to say that. I'd be reaching if I said my whole life. I've been playing 2K since I've been gaming and you mean to tell me I gotta stoop to this low level? I gotta deal with crazy three-point shooters because these guys just picked up the game, grabbed their mom's credit card, got an all-gold team, did the VC glitch as much as they can, got all these gold players, and they want to just jack up threes with Dale Curry. So I got to deal with that? I got to deal with that. I got two hands in his face. I'm triple teaming. I got all five players on this one man in the corner in the three-point line. You mean to tell me he has to just jack a three in my face? It's nothing I can do about it. I got to just deal with it, right? Oh, yeah, that's my problem. It's not your problem. Nah, 2K, it's not your problem. It's my problem, right? <laughs> that's crazy but instead of having online lobbies from 2k11 everybody's in the same lobby pretty much in 2k13 everybody's playing on the same difficulty one thing i'm gotta admit i like private is still the same you can just assume that's pretty much what lobbies were they had pro lobbies so that those casual three-point cheesers can go ahead play in those pro lobbies they had all-star lobbies, superstar lobbies, sim lobbies, hall of fame lobbies, you get my point, right? But 2K13, matter of fact, 2K12 on up. There's gonna be no more lobbies. There's no more of that. So we're just gonna have to deal with this 
We got to deal with Jimmy picking up the game. He's seven years old. He has a bow cut. He has freckles. He's chubby. He doesn't watch basketball. All he knows is this guy has a high three-point rating and he can jack threes. Seven-year-old kid beating grown-ass men in my team. He doesn't know any better. He's just having fun, right? And they made the control so easy in 2K13. So it seems like that's the direction they were going. In. Now, enough of that. 2K14. Online, I doubt that was touched. So basically, you're going to see the same stuff. And I believe you guys seen in the trailer, it's the same. If you go online in 2K13 and you compare that to online in 2K14, the only difference is now it says Cruise. That's the only difference. In one of the tabs and somewhere in the middle it says Cruise. That is the only difference. Copy and paste. That's about it. My team mode. Now, this is what got me so upset. Oh, before I say anything, my career mode. Last thing about my career mode, the thing that I actually like had to fall back on 2k14 was the fact that they stopped really caring about 2k14's my career they just said hey the only real difference is gameplay feels better in my career mode and the ai is smarter i'm like what that is how you promote your my career mode the ai is smarter what the hell is this i don't care about the ai being smarter what's actually keeping this game mode relevant smarter ai i play miami heat i don't care what they do they're gonna try to blow me out because hall of fame is no joke they're gonna try their best to do some type of cheese and score but you mean to tell me you changed the tendencies of lebron and Dwayne wade already trying to go on dunking sprees to actually try to get inside the paint more what that is not my career mode i don't i don't know man that's just crazy now here we go my team mode earlier this morning i uploaded the video of ld2k opening up some packs his starter pack and it was the same exact way as nba 2k 13s i thought hey maybe we can skip this maybe if i get a dud in my first pack i can go ahead and just skip this animation because i ain't got time to see all of this nonsense the only difference in my team is the tournaments tournaments are cool but if you want to actually enjoy tournaments you got to have an all gold team and if you have an all gold team you're spending about 2000 to 3000 vc so you're spending all this money to get how much back they ain't say anything about increasing vc per game nah but the only way to actually enjoy the tournament mode is to have all gold teams going up against other all gold teams because bronze is on pro who wants to play on pro <laughs> that's crazy their schedules and the thing is mate see when i seen this i saw what i wanted to see but then i had to go back and watch because when i made my video i was like damn schedules are going to be my number one game mode that i'm playing in my team this year because you get vc for free just like exhibition right nah if you have an all gold team, you're just going to play this team's schedule and just hope for the best. You can go and try to win 700 VC. You can go and try to win one gold pack or one bronze pack. But is it worth it? 3000 VC per game and I'm only going to get 700. I don't think so. And plus, it's not really going to help me get those tier players. It's not going to help me advance into the first seed because there's no training camp in my team. Yeah, training camp would sound pretty interesting, right? But there's probably still those attributes, those one game attributes. I seen him in the pack opening. He got those back. Everything you get in 2K13's pack opening, you get in 2K14's. It's the same exact way. There's probably not even a quick sale. If you want to sell all your nonsense from your packs and all that, you probably got to do it one by one again. And you know how long that takes because it has to update into 2K's system. It has to update, update in 2K's servers and that's going to take forever. <laughs> this is crazy. But that's just my take on this. Hopefully, my gut is telling me they didn't really care 
about current gen. They purposely did this to current gen because it would allow them to actually focus on what's important to them. And that's next gen because live is coming back and live is looking good. Live, their graphics have improved. They're listening. Oh, don't think live wasn't listening to everybody bashing them. That's why they pushed their game back plenty of times. They are watching. Live is paying close attention. When they heard that 2K had annoyances and blacked out with block dunks, the first thing they said was block dunks. At first I said, nah, that's it? Nah, but then they upgraded their graphics because I believe it was Elite. Chris Paul was looking buff. Then you had people looking too skinny. Now, look at Kyrie Irving. Look at the cover athlete. Kyrie Irving is looking like a boss. The facial expressions, muscle movement, jersey movement, even the basketball looks real. But I'm just saying, 2K's focus was next gen. That's my opinion. That's my take on it. Because this doesn't look right. This doesn't seem right. I can't even call this an actual game because this is just something to keep us on hold to next gen in a way you can say it sucks because look we gotta pay $60 for this then we gotta pay $60 for that and I think this was already publicly announced they already said that 2k13 current gen was going to be a different game from NBA 2k14 next gen meaning different modes and such so hey hopefully I'm right because I love 2K. I'd hate for them to just say, hey, this is it. Next gen, hey, this is it. Because they've been keeping quiet. And it's like every time they mention something, I just get more and more disappointed. Hopefully. I got my fingers crossed. I'm hoping that next gen has something good. I'm not getting next gen consoles right away. So it, it's going to kind of be 50 50 with me. They got to blow me out the water because. I'm really not trying to get next gen consoles right away because you know next gen consoles are going to have so many bugs and glitches and errors and all this other nonsense back orders. So we just got to wait and see. Not only should you leave a like and subscribe for more new videos, but you should also follow me on Twitter. There's no reason not to.